What is up guys? Welcome back. I'm Em and I'm here with a very pregnant Miss Bliss and I thought we were going to have puppies today but it turns out that they're not fully baked yet so I gotta wait another day. So I'm trying to be patient. Bliss is the best girl. She is so easygoing and um, just so relaxed through this whole process. It really helps calm me down <laughs> because I'm like, let's go. <laughs> So anyway, today's video is going to be a little bit different. I wanted to share with you guys what I use before, during, and shortly after my girl's whelp. And so this video is more towards my breeder friends. Maybe you're thinking about getting into breeding. Or maybe you're just curious what I use um, for the girls during whelping. So um, I will have a link of everything I use in the description. And um, if you purchase something through my Amazon link, you will help support the channel. It will not cost you any extra, but it will help support us. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, but without further ado, let's check out this whelping room. All right, guys, here is the whelping room, and this is actually my bedroom. I've got a whelping box in the corner. Um, I always have the clothes basket real close to the whelping box. Up here, this is my scale. This is where I weigh puppies. Actually, I I pull it out, but that's where I store it when I'm not weighing puppies. I've got all my paperwork up here, so this is where my weight chart is. Um, my puppy culture workbook that I absolutely love. I have paper towels. I'll get some cleaner. I don't have my cleaner bottle in here, but usually my cleaner bottle sits up here. These are for early scent introduction and nail polish. These are to mark to ID puppies. Um, I've got my water bucket. I like the bucket because I can put enough water in there. It doesn't tip over very easy, but it's not shallow enough that puppies cannot crawl into it. Um, usually I set it up on the whelping box, but because I know she's going to be nesting when she's in labor, I have it down so that she doesn't have to worry about bumping it over. Um, I have a bunch of towels. This is out here specifically for when she whelps. Once she whelps, then that laundry basket will be used for transporting puppies. Um, right now it's just holding all my towels. And then I've got a very pregnant girl. And over here, I pulled this stuff out. Again, this is whelping stuff, so this isn't necessarily <laughs> where it will be the whole time. But I do have some hospital pee pads in my closet that I use for bedding after the puppies are born. This is my whelping mat that she does not whelp on. She actually uses that after puppies are born. That's what goes on top of the pee pads um, that the puppies will actually be laying directly on that. This is the blanket that she will be whelping on. It is vacuum sealed right now. That's how I store it. But that will go in the middle of the floor where she's at right now. And I'll use these bath towels to go on top of it. Um... That's how I've always done it. I love it. There's not a ton of trash. There is a bunch of laundry to do, but I don't like making a bunch of trash to go in the dump. So um, this is how I've chose to do it. So over here is this actually I keep in the kitchen. This is my milk replacer um, kit, my feeding kit. It's also in case she gets mastitis kit. Um, and I'll go into that in a minute. And then this is the actual whelping kit that I keep on hand when she's whelping. I keep this right next to me and I'm going to go over these supplies here in a minute. All right, so this is the whelping box and I set my camera up and then the very pregnant Bliss decided to roll over. So part of the shot is her huge belly, but I am not going to move her. Um, so the whelping box is homemade and it is a, I believe one by six on the top and it overlaps just a little bit on the outside so that I can lift it from the outside. The inside is where the puppies can go under it if mom's laying up against it. The puppies have room to get between her and this board right here. That's the hog rail part of it. And the bottom board, I think it's a two by four. It might be a two by six. I can't quite remember. Um, but it's just a couple boards screwed together. I painted it and that way I can easily wipe it down. Um, you can make them so that you can unscrew the corners and, like I said, you can put them away for storage pretty easy. But it is a bottomless whelping box, so that's all it is, is this top board and this board. So on the bottom, it's completely open. So you pull the bedding out, set the box on top of the bedding, and it holds it in place so that mom's not going to be able to move it very easy. Um, if, she, if you have a dog that's a pretty aggressive nester, 
this wouldn't work. But um, most of it, I mean, I'm with the girls all the time. So if I see them nesting, sometimes I'll leave one of the nesting blankets beside the box to give her a place to nest. And then she can go in and lay with the puppies. That's worked really well for me. But basically by having all the bedding under the lip all the way around of the box, the puppies can't find a corner and go under the bedding. So then they aren't getting accidentally stepped on or laid on, um, which can be very bad for a little puppy. So I love this box. I've used it for several years now. Um, I've used a couple different ones and this is my favorite. It's nice and low, so it's not a huge step for mom to get into. It's nice and open so I can easily look in and see and do a head count. Um, and mom likes to rest her head here or she'll rest, like if they're laying nursing, they'll take their back foot. She's not <laughs> leaned up, but they'll rest their back foot up on the ledge. Um, and then puppies can go under. I've caught them doing that quite a bit. So love the whelping box, highly recommend. If you're handy or know somebody who can do it for you, check this out. The other great thing about the whelping box is I can sit on the edge of it and take care of puppies, do whatever I need to do, or sit on it and explain to you guys what is in this. So this is the kit that I keep right next to me when I am whelping and I it's got a handle so I can easily move it wherever I need to. It is a hard plastic so it is super easy to clean up and disinfect between litters. On this side of it, I have my poo bag dispenser with poo bags in it. These are for placentas if mom doesn't want to eat them or if you don't want mom to eat them, just scoop them up with a poo bag, just tie them up, throw them out like a poo. Super easy. In this little pocket right behind the poo bag dispenser, I have a paper and notepad and two pens. So this is super important to have at least two pens because one of them will just walk away on you and the other will quit working. <laughs> um, so make sure you have enough pens that you can find them when you need them. Um, so in my notepad, what I do is on the top, I put the name of the litter, the date that they are whelped, um, I'll put the time that the puppy is whelped, I'll put the gender, um, the birth weight, and the color ID I give it. Um, and then at the back, I'll put a P if I got a placenta with it. And that way I can keep track of how many placentas I have and how many puppies I have. So at the end, if I have 10 puppies and eight placentas, either I had a couple twins, which is very rare, or mom's got a placenta retained and that could cause infection. So I can get a hold of my vet and we can make sure either she doesn't have the placenta or treat her to prevent the infection. So also in this pocket, I have unwaxed dental floss. This is used to tie up umbilical cords. This is not my favorite because I'm not coordinated enough to tie it fast enough on a wiggling puppy. Um, the other thing is once you tie it on there, if mom does eat the umbilical cord when it falls off, then she'll end up eating the floss. Not the end of the world, but not something I want going through my dog. So I don't usually use this. Um, I also have these umbilical cord clamps and they're just a plastic clamp. Once they're clamped together, they're, I mean, you can get them off. They're kind of like a zip tie um, trigger to hold. Um, but the idea is you leave them on once they're on and they'll fall off with the cord. I don't care for them because I'm not coordinated <laughs> enough and they are kind of bulky to have hanging on a puppy for a couple days, especially if you're breeding a really small breed. Um, but I got them to try them and I have them if I ever want to try them again. I also have some super glue. This is super nice to have in case mom gets a little aggressive with her um, chewing the cord and she accidentally gets a toe or a tail or something you can close it up with some super glue so you can get to the vet um, and this side pocket right here this big pocket I have a nightlight this is a headlamp because um, if you're whelping at night and mom has to go out to go potty make sure you take her on a leash take a flashlight or headlight and a towel because any breeder who's done this any length of time will tell you, you will deliver a puppy outside at some point. So if it's at night, you want a headlamp. Um, so I keep that in my whelping kit. I also have a stethoscope and this is super, super handy. I didn't get this till later on. Um, I'd whelped several litters before I got this. So thankful I got this and wish I would have started with it. Um, 
if you are whelping a litter and you're not sure exactly how many puppies you have, you can listen for puppy heartbeats and it will tell you if you have another live puppy in there or not. It's also super cool to listen to heartbeats before the puppies are even born. So absolutely recommend one of these. Um, I've also got Vet Wrap and I use this, I have Goldens so they have fluffy tails and I use this to wrap around the mom's tail. I don't do this until she actively starts pushing so I let her do all her nesting and digging. If I put it on then, she'd just take it off and fall off. But um, I put it on while she's right when she starts pushing. I leave it on until she's done whelping and then I take it off. And you'll still have to wash her tail um, because she'll still have some discharge after whelping, but it will cut down on the amount of cleaning up you have to do. It will also make it easier to see what you're doing um, because you won't be dealing with all that fur back there. So if you have a long coated breed, I recommend the vet wrap. Um, I have batteries, always good to have extra batteries on hand um, for the headlamp and I have it for my thermometer. I've got my emergency phone numbers. These are in case my phone dies, my phone battery dies. I've got somebody there with me. I can use their phone to call my emergency vet and not have to freak out about, oh my goodness, where's the, where's the phone number? Um, this is a puppy clamp. Thankfully, I've never had to use it and I hope I never do. Um, but the idea is it goes in and clamps around the puppy and you help pull the puppy out. I figure if I have it, I'll never have to use it. So I bought it and it's worked so far. Um, and then on the handle of my container, I've got collars and these are what I use if I can get it there we go these are what I use to ID puppies while mom is whelping so as soon as they're born dry them off make sure they're not bleeding pop a collar on them um, right down that way I can keep track of who's who uh, my puppies usually look very similar and these do not stay on them more than during whelping um, once she's done whelping, then I switch and I use um, nail polish to ID the puppies. I prefer that method because I don't want to have to worry about puppies chewing on collars, getting their mouth stuck and twisted, and then choking another puppy. Um, I also don't have to worry about how quick the puppies are growing and if the collar, if their neck grows into the collar. Um, I know a breeder that that happened to. So, this is just while mom is whelping. Um, and I keep several different colors on the handle of this. Now on this pocket right here, I have a glass jar. And in this glass jar, I will put some iodine. I usually dilute it a little bit and I'll set this up right when mom starts going into labor. So I'll go ahead and I'll put my iodine in there and that will disinfect all the tools that I have in here. So I have a bulb syringe. This is for cleaning out um, mucus from the puppy's mouth and nose. I have a pair of scissors. This is if I was using the dental floss, I would use the scissors on it or um, also to cut umbilical cords. But the way I deal with umbilical cords is hemostats. And these are my absolute favorite way to do it. Um, they're locking, so I cannot pull those apart. But if I do them at an angle, then I can pull them apart. They have little tiny teeth on them, and so it's I've never cut through a cord with them, but they have enough grip that they stay in place. And you just put them on the puppy, you lock them, and leave them on the puppy. Um, usually no more than 20 minutes. Usually within 10 to 15 minutes, it works. Um, and then you just take them off the puppy, and if the puppy's still bleeding, put it back on. If not, then you're good to go. Um, there's nothing on the cord. Mom can eat the cord. There's nothing that'll hurt her and there's nothing hanging on the puppy. So this is my absolute favorite way. It's so easy and quick to get it on there, um, to get it on the cord too. So um, I do recommend having more than one of these because I've had I think up to three puppies wearing these at the same time during whelping. Um, and then between, you know, once the puppy's done with it, you pop it off, you put it back in your jar with your iodine so the iodine can disinfect it and you're ready to go for the next puppy. In this other little cubby right here, I have Oral Cal Plus. This is a calcium supplement. It will give mom an energy boost. It will give her a calcium boost. 
So I give about a pea-sized drop for my girls. They're about 60 pounds. Um, but I do about a pea-sized drop after every puppy. If it's been a couple hours between puppies, I might give them a little bit more. Um, and then whatever's left of this tube, I'll just finish out over the next few days after whelping. Um, but I love this stuff. I won't, I won't ever whelp without it. Um, I've also got a thermometer in there. So a dog will actually drop a temperature, have a temperature drop about 24 to 48 hours before they whelp. And so a lot of breeders will take the temperature a few times throughout the day to try to catch that drop to tell them when their girl's gonna whelp. I've tried it and I've never succeeded. Um, I've never been able to catch the drop and so I quit trying and just looked for other signs. I'm with my girls all the time so me knowing two days ahead of time that they're gonna whelp isn't as like I, I already know that they're due really close so I'm keeping a very close eye on them. So what I use this for is after mom whelps, I will take her temperature um, a couple times through the day, once in the morning, once at night. And this just makes sure she doesn't uh, spike a fever. And if she does, I know right away and then I can treat right away. And it makes it so that the, the it's easier on her to catch it early. Um, it's also easier to treat if you catch it early. So this is one of the only tools from this kit that stays out after whelping. Um, I keep this out while she's nursing the first couple weeks. Um, in this big pocket over here, I have my oxygen boost. This is, if a puppy is um, having trouble breathing, you can just give them a little oxygen um, to help get them going. So I have a daily catheter, and this is basically the same idea as the bulb syringe. This is to clear out the airway um, so the puppy can start breathing. I probably should watch a YouTube video on this because I don't know how to use it. Um, I tried using it one time and I got frustrated because I didn't know how to use it. I thought I did. And I ended up just going to the bulb syringe because I, in the moment I just want the puppy to breathe. Um, I also have some water-based lube and a syringe with a catheter attached, ready to go. Um, when you have a puppy that gets stuck, if it's a really big puppy, um, this will help. And trust me, in the moment you want this ready to go, um, I've used it a couple times and it does help quite a bit. And you want to make sure it's water-based lube, not um, the other, because you want to make sure that it doesn't get, like this will clear out the lungs a lot easier. Um, Tums, I have, I honestly have not used Tums since I started using the Oral Cow Plus. So I probably don't need this in this kit, but I have it because in the moment I don't want to wish that I had it and don't have it. So that is what is in my handy little kit here and what will be right next to mom while she is whelping. Um, let's go check out the milk replacement kit, All right? Is that okay with you? Blink. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is the milk replacer kit, the supplement feeding kit, the um, if mom gets mastitis kit, basically. And in here, what I've got is my milk replace, my milk um, recipe for milk replacer. I've got some goat's milk, powdered goat's milk. I always keep this on hand. Um, that's part of the recipe. That's the only part of the recipe that is dry that I can keep in here. I have a bunch of different types of bottle nipples and basically whenever somebody says, oh, I love these, I've purchased them because um, you never know what puppies, which ones puppies will prefer. So this kit, I think it has like four different styles um, that I got in this kit and they're really soft. Some puppies will do well with softer, some will do well with harder. I've got a couple of the um, Miracle nipples. And these are just regular baby bottle nipples. Um, this is a different style of a baby bottle nipple. So basically, I just try to have as many different ones as I can on hand. This is actually a goat nipple um, that goes on like a regular pop bottle. And then I also have a couple little tiny ones because you never know when you're going to get a kitten <laughs> show up or a baby squirrel or something. Um, I also have a couple different styles of catheters. So this one is a clear one. I've got a couple. I like the red rubber. 
Um, but I also like, I really like the clear ones because then you can see fluids going through them a little easier. Um, so I always have catheters on hand for emergency tube feeding. Um, I have a whole bunch of different size syringes. Um, just a bunch of different ones of those. I have, these are cosmetic sponges. Um, they're little triangles and basically you just cut the tips like this to make a little uh, kind of nipple shape and then you cut a slice at this end. You put a syringe in there and you syringe the milk into the sponge and the puppy will drink from the sponge. I've used it and I don't like to use it but again every puppy is different so always have a variety on hand just in case. A um, bunch of different bottles. I have more bottles under here, a bunch of bottles. Um, this is actually the style that I've used the most that seemed to work, especially I had one litter that it worked really well. This just came with the bottles. And then I have, this is a, basically like a breast pump um, that I've heard other people have had success with using on their dogs. And so I've got it just in case but basically you kind of like flip it like that, put it on the nipple, let it flip and it creates a suction before you let it flip. Sorry, you flip it like that, squeeze it, put it on, let it flip back and then let it go and it will slowly draw out the milk. Um, so I have this to try in case I need it, but I haven't needed it since I got it. Before I got it, I had a girl that I really could have used it on. Um, so that's for more for um, getting milk for mom if you need to feed a puppy or if mom has too much milk and you need to express some. And then in this bag, I've got, this is just a regular scarf um, and I use it to tie around mom's belly in case I'm treating her for mastitis. So if mom starts to get mastitis, I will use, I've got this towel here and I will soak this towel in warm Epsom salt water. I will use a heating pad um, and then use the scarf to kind of hold it in place and then I'll alternate between warm Epsom salt and cold cabbage leaves and I kind of alternate between those um, and then also expressing, trying to express the milk. That's kind of how I treat the mastitis um, if I do have a girl that gets it. So that is what is in this kit. Um, not shown here is the Epsom salt and the cabbage. Um, and then also the rest of the milk replacer recipe, which is yogurt, um, egg yolk, caro syrup, and I use beef liver water with mine. So that is what is in this kit. Um, next, let's talk about the supplements I use for mom. So here's a few of the things I would make sure to have on hand before my girls whelp. I've got red raspberry leaves. These are given to them after they whelp to help the uterus contract back down and clean out. I also give these, give red raspberry leaves to my girls three times throughout the week um, when they are not pregnant just to help keep their uterus in shape. I've got probiotics. These actually have prebiotics in them as well. The other brand that I use is Dr. Mercola's. I really like that one. Um, I start this before my girls whelp and I will continue to feed them probiotics every single day until puppies are weaned and they are done taking care of puppies. This will help keep the chance of your puppies or your mama getting um, coccidia or giardia down by keeping her gut healthy. I've got 100% pure canned pumpkin. This is in case mom gets um, diarrhea. This is an immune boosting supplement and that mom will get this after she has whelped it will just help give her body a boost as she's trying to heal up after whelping. So if my mom's got too much milk or if I'm trying to, when I'm trying to wean puppies, I give parsley and it's just dried parsley. Um, I add it to her food to try to cut back on the milk production. On the flip side of that, if you want to increase milk production, you feed fenugreek. I think I'm saying that right. And this is supposed to help um, increase her milk. And then if you're having a girl that's struggling with lumps or mastitis, 
then you can add some sunflower lecithin. This is supposed to break up the fat particles in the milk, allowing it to flow out more smoothly. Um, and if you've got a girl that's overproducing milk, add sunflower lecithin along with a little bit of parsley. Just be careful on how much parsley you give if you do have puppies that are still needing to nurse because you don't want to dry your girl up early. A couple other things that are not shown would be my vanilla ice cream. They get that during whelping. Um, cottage cheese, I always make sure to have some of that. After they whelp um, for the next couple weeks, I kind of add it to their meal. Um, if your girl is struggling with weight, pork, ground plain pork is a great way to add some extra calories. My girls are all raw fed, so they're used to it. If you are feeding kibble, you might have to be careful um, adding a raw meat. Do it very, very slowly, but the best way to keep weight on a, on a girl is to add raw pork. All right, guys, I am plopped down here next to the trash can because that's where Miss Bliss is. And I thought she deserved to be in the end of this video. And everybody else wanted to join. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will leave um, links to all the items that I'm using in the description below. Um, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And hit that notification bell so you are sure to catch our next video. Because hopefully we will have these little babies um, to share with you guys in our next video. So thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you guys later. Have a golden day.